Hello, my name is Eileen Davidson. I'm 30 years old. I reside in Burnaby, British Columbia, and I have a autoimmune disease called rheumatoid arthritis. I am also a single mother. I have a child named Jacob. He will be four on December 13th, and he's my world. I unfortunately, um, due to my disease, I can no longer work. And let me tell you right now, that is not easy. <laughs> being a single mother and being ill. I was very persistent and contacted a lot of places um, because I personally feel like I have something and uh, I want to raise awareness with what an invisible illness is, what rheumatoid arthritis Ill is, also help others that are in a situation like mine because I hit rock bottom when I was diagnosed, I went through a lot and I did it all alone. Um, but I, I did it, and I'm very proud of how I did it, because I came back stronger. During my year and a half, bit of more than a year and a half now, actually, journey uh, into discovering what the healthcare system and how to take care of myself, I've learned so much about diet, about what doctors can do for us, different treatments, um, about what meditation, yoga, all that can do for somebody who is in chronic pain and putting mind over matter through chronic illness. And I want to share my knowledge and my experience to hopefully help others who are suffering. Right on. And I would like to raise awareness for the many, many invisible illnesses that are out there. One of my goals right now is I'm finding ways to raise awareness for what my disease is because it was a shock when I got it. I was 29 years old when I was diagnosed. I worked as an esthetician for nine years. I went to college for that. I was good at my job. I was eventually going to become a medical esthetician. I had dreams, I had clients, and I made money. Sported my rock star boyfriend at the time with that job and took care of my kid. And then all of that was shattered. Um, Rheumatoid arthritis stole all that from me, um, including the rockstar boyfriend, but that's okay, <laughs> over that. And uh, it didn't take away my child, in fact I think it's actually made us a lot closer because even though I can't work a normal 9 to 5 job, I can take care of him. Um, and he brightens my day when I am in pain. And so my idea was to raise awareness, to show people what this disease is often thought to be a little old lady disease and to be just arthritis and show them is a lot more than that and that somebody can be disabled and not look disabled um, they could be sick and not look sick and they could be suffering and not look like they're suffering but there are signs and unfortunately now I know what the signs of somebody who's suffering because I suffered and I want to raise awareness hopefully do a little film because I've met countless people who I've said I am sick I have rheumatoid arthritis and they just look at me with a dumbfounded look and say you I go to an arthritis center and they think I'm the instructor the little old ladies that are there they think I'm the instructor and I'm like no I'm one of you <laughs> and uh, I just think it's time for people to know that Arthritis isn't just for old people, and invisible illnesses, chronic illnesses, are very severe. And there's a lot we can do for the people that are suffering. And I want to prove it. <laughs> Even if I can only reach point. one mm -hmm. person, or whether it's helping somebody who is newly diagnosed, or whether it is somebody with a family member or a loved one who has the illness that they don't have to be alone to suffer through it they if they feel a certain way and people don't understand why they're feeling a certain way and it's easy for somebody who doesn't look sick to be angry because of the stigma that people have against us we don't look sick but We've taken drugs that are used to treat cancer. Um, I've had to inject a needle into myself weekly. 
I've had MRIs, X-rays, I've seen, I've taken 10 drugs that have not worked. I've had my, some hair fall out. I've constantly had to do blood work. I cannot drink alcohol, you know. There's a lot of things that I can no longer do. Um, if I eat bad, and I mean bad by candy, processed food, or gluten, I swell, I feel sick. Now the thing with rheumatoid arthritis is every disease is different and every case is different. So you may know somebody with a not so severe case and only affects one joint or you may know somebody who has a very severe case like myself and it affects every joint but I'm not deformed. I'm very normal looking. So that could be difficult. Um, I can't always be social. I can't always do what I want to do or what I'm supposed to do. And it can... Sickness causes a lot of isolation. There's days where I can't leave my apartment. I just feel so horrible. Um, it sucks in dating. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so I do the internet dating just because I like to tell a guy right away that I don't have to tell him face to face. By the way, I, I'm a single mother and I'm on disability and I have so-and-so disease. They either keep talking or they kind of ghost you after that. It's like, I'm, thank you, I'm actually happy I put no real effort into the individual. Um, but whenever I do meet a guy in person, it usually always responds the same way. And it's, they start to talk about responsibilities, how they want to travel. And this is just like the first time conversation I have with them, be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a single mom and I don't work kind of thing. They're like, oh, that's cool. A couple minutes they start thinking, and, oh yeah, I really want to travel in life and uh, I'm just not ready for kids. And I'm like, okay, cool. Mm. And so um, I think people also, the way I thought too about six people before I was sick, kind of always think they're sort of weird, they're sort of kooky, they're kind of negative. And it's like, eh, we're not. We're just maybe having a bad day and we're angry because people give us a lot of bullshit. Yeah. Oh, I'm just doing this. Do you want to try a different angle? Oh, I just zoomed out a bit. We'll just do like one more question and then we'll set up a... Okay. Although this is going uh, a lot of places. Um, could go like this. What, how does it look? This is why I want to do a whole film, like a whole mm -hmm. little documentary because there's so much. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah like... <laughs> I got like four topics and... Yeah. I mean, if you guys are totally interested... I should probably... Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, okay, just one more question. Oh, mean, okay. What, what, what kind of, like, advice or what do you want to do for people that, um, like, how do you want to inspire people to keep going? I want people to see that despite illness, I still want to be myself. I still want to do the things that I love to do. It may be different. I want people to notice that I took a horrible experience and turn it into a positive and if I can do that then they can too. Um, I want to inspire young girls to take care of themselves to not let bullying get them down. Don't let people ever bring you down because that brought me down. I I hit rock bottom, I hit you know I did stuff that I wasn't proud of. Um, I led a destructive lifestyle when I got really depressed about being sick and I pulled myself out of that depression um, through medication, through diet, through exercise and it's so important to listen to what the doctors say when it says diet is so important, exercise, taking care of yourself is important, it's really up to the person to decide if they want to take medication by a doctor that's their own personal journey. It's, I will never tell someone they should or shouldn't take drugs. But I personally do believe in them. Um, I haven't found the right one yet, but I'm hoping. And I want to share which ones work for me. Um, I want to share what natural remedies work for me because they are the only thing that has helped me. I want to also help young girls who are maybe single mothers or sick or just feeling down. <laughs>
You know, there's so many different avenues that I can take with my new experience um, and turn it into a positive rather than letting it eat me alive. And I want to inspire. Being a, sun a single mother while sick is probably the singly hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, knowing that I have to take a medication and I can't have my kid for one to two days because I might react to the badly to the medication where they've made me pass out for 10 days and lose tons of weight from these medications, um, vomiting, you're so sick. One of the drugs used to tr treat rheumatoid arthritis is chemotherapy, so it does a number on you. And then of course the disease itself. I can't run around with my kid. And you feel guilt. The feeling of guilt when you are ill and a parent with no help, it's heartbreaking because I have this amazing child that is so sweet and I just want to play with him, but it hurts and I can't and he's three and he understands that mommy's hurting. He goes, mommy, you're sick, take your medication. Or he says, mommy, you're not sick, you have me. And I go, exactly, I have you, I have you to live for because I have a chronic illness and even though I'm gonna live with this for the rest of my life, which is 40 years or so, 50 years, I have that challenge to live for because my son who's telling me he has to go potty. Okay, go potty, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have him to live for and him to fight for, so it's, it's the hardest thing I've done but also the most rewarding thing I've done.